Hello everyone, welcome to today's video and today we will be understanding the life cycle of Antamoeba histolytica. In this video, if this is your first first video, uh, illustration based video, if you, have, you haven't seen those videos before, let me tell you one thing that what I do is I'm going to design this entire image, everything of that from uh, the simple basic components that I've already designed and then compile this image all together and finally it will look like something like this and during that particular process I'll also explain the details of the of, uh, of the life cycle of Antamoeba histolytica. You can see a lot of things are happening. You can see a lot of components. They are already labeled. I'm going to use this information to create this uh, this image. And during that particular process, we should be able to also understand the life cycle. So without any delay, let's start the designing process. OK, let me let me explain a few things before we directly jump on to designing process. Uh, you you must have seen that video where I've explained the Antamoeba histolytica trophozoite. They are nothing but the active and motile form of Antamoeba histolytica. And uh, they, they basically are not that resistant. The resistant form of Antamoeba histolytica is the cyst. I'm going to use these terms again and again uh, while the designing process is going to continue. So I, I hope that you understand what is the difference between trophozoite and the cyst. If you don't, then I recommend you please watch that video. So as you can see, this is uh, the trophozoite. You can see pseudoporia. You can see all the all the things inside inside the cell. And second is the cyst. So you can see here, cyst is the round form. It has that tough wall. It can resist environmental conditions such as dehydration and uh, also lack of nutrients. Trophozoids can uh, can differentiate into into the cyst form. So that's the important point. All right. So we are here where we will use these uh, small small parts that I've uh, designed on the left and the right side. I'll also have. Uh, I also have these labels that I'm going to use, and finally, the image that I've showed you. We're gonna we're gonna try to design similar image like that, right? We have all the things here, so let's start the process. Okay, we're I'll tell you some of the basic things, and uh, we'll also, uh, you know, d uh, discuss some of the important points. So as you can see, I've already told you that Antimoeba histolytica is a is a human parasite, so it is going to uh, cause disease in humans. That so that is why we need uh, the system that is. Uh, that is going to be targeted by this this uh, parasite so in this case is the digestive tract so i'll start with the the digestive tract that i have right and slowly slowly i'll just zoom in so as you can see so this is this is what i have already designed and uh, you have uh, you have the uh, the stomach here and then uh, you can see the small intestine uh, usually it is not it is not going to be like that you can have uh, like large intestine also along with this so why don't we uh, add the large in intestine so it looks much much better uh, better than this right so as you can see i'm i'm putting the large in intestine here so this is this seems like a decent uh, schematic of a of the human digestive tract right okay so what I've designed is I'm trying to show you is uh, this is this is where it's going to connect to the mouth and then stomach and then uh, small intestine and then th this is the part where large intestine is there. Okay, all right, it looks good. Now the first step that will uh, that will happen in this case is uh, the contaminated food and uh, water contaminated with the cyst of Antimoeba histolytica is going to enter into into the system, uh, right? So so through this it is going to enter inside the human body so i already have as you can see here this is uh, the tetranucleated cyst and i've shown you the image also right so this cyst is going to enter uh, through our uh, uh, our mouth because because of the contaminated food contaminated uh, uh, water so cyst is as you can see here right now entering into into our system and and then it is going to enter directly into the stomach so i can i can draw another one which uh, probably is smaller than that Right, so what I can do is uh, I can put it here. So you just have to, you know, imagine that the cyst is entering into into the stomach. So here it's it has entered into the stomach, and now we already discussed, and you can see uh, the illustration for the for the uh, stomach case. Said right, the pH is very very low in stomach, so you can see cyst is getting exposed to that particular uh, pH condition, and then the ability of the cyst because it's highly uh, resistant to various environmental condition it can it can basically uh, it, it can save itself because it has that uh, protective covering right so you can see here we have a lot of acid in the stomach but still it is surviving because it has the protective covering it is uh, very very tough 
So let's label these things, right? As I told you, this is tetranucleated. We can also call it as a quadri quadrinucleated cis. So this is uh, the important form. This is uh, the infective form of endomyopia histolytica. And then what will happen? This is going to uh, basically move from stomach. So I'm going to label the stomach also. So this is this is this, the human stomach here. That part, correct? And then this is going to pass into uh, the small intestine and in the small intestine what happens is it's it's outer covering gets digested with with trypsin and because of that another form is going to get released in from that from that cyst and we can call it as a meta cyst right so as you can see here let me why don't i zoom in and i show you what is happening so as you can see the process of excitation is happening where the outer covering is getting uh, removed because of the action of trypsin and then uh, the inner component which is getting uh, exposed inside the small intestine so i'm going to move this actually over here so you can see this process excitation is happening in the small intestine once the excitation happens after the complete excitation process we are going to have another form and that is uh, the metacyst. So I'll tell you what is metacyst, and uh, and this this one, as you can see, without the covering, that we call uh, that particular form as the metacyst. And since it is uh, it is designed in a very very unique way, so I'm I'm facing some challenges here. Okay. One second. Okay. So now it is fine. I can control uh, the the structure of this. I can reduce the size and then I'll explain this, right? So here what is happening, first let me increase this. So cell, not cell wall, basically the outer covering of uh, the, the cyst is removed. Now that part is there and then after several divisions, small, small trophozoites, they are going to get released into the small intestine. That is what it is happening. And then they are going to mature into the mature trophozoid form. So that is here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm trying to fit all these things into, into these components because I've already done that, it should should not be a big deal. So yeah, that, that looks good. And then I can see that these are the metacystic trophozoites. That is what I told you already, correct? So these are the metacystic trophozoites and these small, small things that are getting released from from the, the cyst. And, and this is the trophozoite, mature trophozoite that is over there, right? So that is the trophozoid form, which is getting matured into in, inside the small intestine. So you can see how, how all these things are getting getting together and giving us the final image where the entire life cycle is there. Now after that, what happens? So for that, I have uh, also designed the entire process uh, where all the steps are included. Let me, I just have to put it on the right place and, and then you will see, okay, it's, it's there, right? Okay, all right, that looks good. So you can, you can clearly see and I can also zoom in. Let me copy this one. Okay, so that I can just play around with this and then uh, there is no need uh, for me to again readjust it. So you can see what is happening. I'll just move it. Uh, I'm move it over here. So you can see this trophozoid, then it's moving and then converting into a uh, uterinucleated cyst and then uh, tetranucleated, di uh, sorry, dinucleated cyst and tetranucleated cyst. That is, that is what it is happening. Now, in this case, you can see here the trophozoite uh, now moved into the large intestine part, ileocecal region, and from there now trophozoite is slowly, slowly, slowly moving uh, towards the rectum part of the digestive system. Uh, during that particular uh, process, what happens is it gets exposed to lower pH conditions, and also there there are some other conditions present in the intestine that uh, converts this into into another form, which is uh, the precessed form. So that is the precessed form. Okay, I can move my label here so pre-cyst is uh, it's not a trophozoite it's also not a cyst but the trophozoite is now in the process to get converted into into the cyst form and then it is going to get converted into uninucleated cyst and then second is the binucleated cyst and you can see uh, the final one uh, which is very very easy to guess tetranucleated cyst correct that is the the final cyst stage and another important point is trophozoites in feces as well as uh, cysts will be present in the feces, human feces. How that is going to happen? Uh, because during the active infection, what will happen? There will be a huge amount of trophozoite in our system. So uh, the human feces will release trophozoites also. So only in case of active human infections, trophozoites are going to be present. They're not going to be present in case of uh, uh, non-active or carrier stage of the infection. 
But in the non-active stage or uh, in the carrier stage of this infection, cyst will always be present. Cyst will, pres cyst will be present in both of the cases, correct? There is one form that I already, already uh, told you that the metacyst, and I forgot to label that. So this form is the metacyst, the form uh, that was constructed after the trypsin uh, treatment in the intestine, in the small intestine. So after the excistation, what you get is the metacyst form where, uh, you know, a lot of nucleus, uh, they are there, and then uh, small, small metacystic trophozoites, they are going to come out from that metacyst. So, all right, uh, just a couple of more points. As you can see, there are some cases of extra intestinal MEB assays where uh, amoeba can also move to other organs like liver. So, from the large intestine, it can find its way into, into the into the way into the liver it can cause destruction in the small intestine and get released from there next it can also cause some problems in the intestine it can cause inflammation it can cause damage so you can see this redness that i've tried to illustrate here it's the representation of the damage to the intestine right so as you can see here our entire design is is, is complete we have designed this uh, entire process and also understood uh, the important points some of the important thing that i would like to mention here is the transmission of uh, antimoeba histolytica occurs by the ingestion of uh, the mature cyst present in the contaminated food water or if there is contaminated hands and you are touching your mouth that can also cause this uh, cyst to enter into our body and then it's going to uh, reach to the stomach and then uh, reach to the small intestine, releasing the trophozoites. Next is trophozoites. Uh, they are produced by the existation that we have already discussed. Uh, they will start feeding, they will start re reproducing, and they will colonize the intestine. And that is going, going to cause the, cause the invasion into, into the colonic uh, mucosa leading to the tissue uh, damage and sometimes the ulceration i can i can say will will occur and further than tissue invasion disease uh, then i have already told you that it can it can have uh, serious complications and there are a lot of damage that this organism can cause right so okay all right i think we can conclude this video and uh, with this uh, i i really hope that you are you uh, are now able to better understand uh, the life cycle of antimoeba histolytica it's not that complex but we do have some parasites living a highly complicated life there are various factors that are involved in the infection process we'll also cover those in our future videos and uh, and i i recommend you to please stay tuned to the channel and uh, see those future videos and understand the concept in a, in a new and in, in an interesting way okay so i'll meet in the next video till then take care everyone